should behave every single moment. You're watching out for your feeling. You're watching out for... You don't do it on your own because with flesh, if you listen to your flesh, your flesh say, talk back. Send them to wherever. Tell them the, your peace of mind. Do all... Of, your flesh will take you loose. That's what I'm saying by Monday to Friday being loose all over uh, town and, 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 and in our lives. That's what I'm talking about. Your, if you let your flesh be the, 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 the conductor of your life after you have been saved, it is dangerous. It is worse you haven't been saved. It's, worse, it's better, rather. It's better that you didn't even uh, say the salvation prayer to become a, a Christian. But if you have done that, and you are now in the family of God, my dear, please work up your salvation with fear and trembling. Everything that comes to you, kill it. Every feeling, destroy it. Everything, flush it out of you with the blood of Jesus. Don't let anything end the day with you. Don't. That's why the Bible said, don't let your wrath, don't, don't go to sleep with it. Uh -uh. Flash it out. Get on your knee at the end of each day. Father, this happened. I'm sorry. I repent for this one. Father, I repent for that one. Father, have mercy on this one. Father, and then blood of Jesus, cleanse me. Flash me. Take this seed out. Take you seed. I command you to come out of me. I command you to come out of me. Speak to yourself. Speak my flesh. I command you to be under the submission of, 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 of uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. You no longer are in charge of me. The Holy Spirit is in charge of me. That's how, by the grace of God, you end up being a redeemed, living, a righteous life. We are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. We cannot do it ourselves. Only the spirit of a living God can help us. But as we are doing our part, if you look at the the prayer of salvation, what does it say? If somebody believes and confesses, it doesn't mean uh, you're sleeping and then Jesus, Jesus appears to people and that's the salvation. Jesus appears to people and that's the salvation. However, if the person decides, oh, this is a mere appearance, what Jesus, I don't believe in what I saw. I saw somebody coming into my room and ministering to me, talking to me for almost 30 minutes or an hour, and he left. But believe me, if you have that encounter, you won't even have the chance to say that I don't believe. Because what is going on? <laughs> oh, my dear. You're going to be running around town preaching the gospel. Talk to me. I will tell you my experience. So, I'm telling you that Jesus can come himself, and he is your salvation. And that's your salvation prayer right there with him. But if not, you're supposed to believe in your heart and confess in your mouth. There is a part you're supposed to play in it. There is a part you are supposed to play in it. And that part, you have to sustain that part with a daily washing yourself with the word of God. With your own awareness of the weakness of your flesh and kill that flesh and kill that flesh and put that flesh under submission and 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 rest. no it is a lifestyle he says verse 10 for we are what he has made us he has made us anew created in christ jesus for good works which God prepared before him to be our way of life. He had made us in Christ Jesus for good works, which he had prepared for us beforehand to be our way of life. Now, I'm going to close here today to say that sin is real. Hell is even more real than sin. Sin is real. Hell is more real than sin. So, my dear brethren, when Paul is writing what he's writing, it's not for believers of a day old. It's for you and me today. It's for our offspring tomorrow. 
This word is eternal, as the God who releases it is eternal. This word does not pass away, as the God who reveal, revealed it does, d, d, is not passing away. He is the Alpha of all. He is the Omega of all. He is the everlasting, the self-existing God. He is the forever God. Huh? His word don't pa does not pass away. So what Paul wrote back then is real today, is real tomorrow, will be real until Jesus sees fit to come back. So what he's telling us today is, for we are what he has made us. He had made us what? Redeemed of Jesus, of God, through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our redemption. He has made us redeemed. He has made us righteous. He has made us washed. He has made us clean. He has made us whole. So what he made us through Christ Jesus is not what we were before. We are a new creation. And why did he do that? He, do, he did that for good works, which he prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So he did that on the cross to prepare, he prepared us for good works. And he gave us a new life, a new way of life. So I'm inviting you today, if you call yourself a Christian, if you have made the salvation prayer, but you are backsliding, my dear brother, come back. My dear sister, come back. Enough is enough to think that being a Christian is a casual identity. Oh, I'm a Christian. What did you do Sunday? I went to church. I hook up with my friend in church. I haven't seen a long time. Church is not a social gathering for reconnecting or rekindling your flames. Okay? It's a time of worship. Church can even be in your home. Church can be in your home. If you read the Bible, when even stay in Ephesians, you're going to see where Paul was writing in his letters to either Timothy or other of his children and telling them, oh, um, I can't remember which one of the brothers at home I think it was even a lady who established a church in her home and he was talking, Paul was talking about that. So church can be in your home. We see today, our brethren, the the um, the Quaker family, and, and they are all over, but mostly in the East Coast, they are mostly in Pennsylvania and, and Northern Maryland. They, um, they have their homes, they have the churches in the home. Okay, the patriarch of the family establishes the church in the home and everybody comes to the patriarch's home. The living room is set up for the church. So don't think church is, oh, I'm going to such and such church. Um, it's a place to go hang out. No, it's not a place to go hang out. Jesus did not die on the cross for you to be redeemed, saved for good works. That he prepared beforehand for a way of life for you to just go to church to hang out. So I'm calling on you today. If you are born again. To get your act together. Believe me. I am a living testimony of that. So get your act together. Get to the game. And look for truth. Seek truth. Seek Jesus in truth. You made the time, you made the, the prayer, and you're now born again. It's not the end of it. Now you have to seek Jesus for yourself, and he will reveal himself to you. So get serious with your salvation. It's, it will be a shame for you to, to be born again, and when the rapture comes, you are left behind. Just like someone who is a heathen, that would be a shame. So I, as I'm speaking to you and I pray before, 
that as I pray, I want this word to also minister to me. This is my reminder every day that I have to do better. I have to be aware. I have to be in this constant communication, communion with the spirit of the living God to make sure that I, for what he has made me, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared me beforehand, I am living this way of life. So, dive into Ephesians, read Ephesians for yourself, be fed, and be enlightened, and find the truth one cup at a time, for the truth shall set you free. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and now I invite each, anyone, who is connected to this video that has not received the Lord Jesus yet, I invite you to say this prayer with me. For the whole purpose of this is to make sure that we give you an opportunity to be born again. It is essential. So, the, the Word of God says that um, if we believe and confesses, we will be saved. So, the Word of God is truth and we believe that is true. It's the Word of God. So, I'm inviting you to say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I am a sinner. And I come before your cross. And I give myself to you. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. I believe that you died and rose again for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I welcome you in my heart, my soul, my spirit. Take over me take over my life i yield to you that you transform me from a sinner into a redeemed child of god lord jesus erase my name from the book of death with your precious blood and write my name in the book of life with your precious blood I thank you for the sacrifice you made for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I congratulate you if you have made this prayer. And I praise the name of the living God for a new soul that is now in heaven. May God bless you. And until next time, stay connected. Stay in the word. And if you have made that prayer, I invite you to read the book of John, the Gospel of John, starting with chapter 1, verse 1. That's where you start your walk and discover who your Lord and Savior Jesus is. In Jesus' name, amen.